I wrote the screenplay really thinking still of the people in the novel that were, were my, in my imagination. And then when it came time to cast, um, you know, Robin has always been one of my favorite actresses for years. I, to me, she's an actress in the way, in the tradition of Jenna Rollins, in the sense that she's a beauty who goes into a part really with the heart of a lion. I mean, there's no fear in her. She'll go in and she completely transforms. I mean, the, one of the things that Robin does, which I, I think is very rare, is that you really feel that she, she has somehow filled herself up with the spirit of the character. There is actual spirit or soul in that person. And that's a really unusual thing. Her subtlety, the way that she uses her body in it, the way that she changes her face from what she normally is, uh, is extraordinary. And then each of the characters, you know, we built it. You know, the, I think what you said about it being a breakout performance for all of them in some ways, or or a change, was why they did it in the most for the most part. You know, Julianne said, "I want to play Cat because I haven't played that before." You know, she's played so many parts, and yet she wanted to play that part. And on set, it was funny because she was so happy. I'd never seen her so happy. And I said, "God, you're so happy." And she said, "It's just so great to play someone who isn't depressed." <laughs> she was so happy to play this kind of sociopath. It was Mary. Um, and then, uh, you know, Keanu, I'd studied his work, you know, pretty hard before I decided to ask him to do it. That soulfulness that he has, that uh, quality of almost being from another sphere, I thought was right, you know, and, and, and we made the leap of faith and he's so wonderful. And I mean, it took some convincing to get him to do it and then he was so wonderful. And um, Alan Arkin was actually, in a way, the funniest casting process because he, when we first offered him the part, thinking, well, obviously he'd be great, he could play this guy, um, I got the word that he wanted to talk to me on the phone. So I thought, oh, that's great. I'll convince him to do this. Terrific. I call, you know, he calls me and he says, well, I, I really don't want to have this experience, he said. <laughs> he said, I know this guy very well. He went to City College. He made, he, he told him all these things, very personal things about him. He knew everything about him. He said, and I really don't want to have this experience. I know him, you know, but I don't want to be him. So I said, okay. And then we, you know, cordially got off the phone. And I told my casting director that he had passed. And she said, really? So she called his agent the next day. I get a call, he wants to talk to you again. So it turned out that his agent and his lawyer and his manager had all called up to yell at him, <laughs> saying, look, you keep saying there are no parts, there's no great scripts. This is a great script and a great part for you. Why? You know, and what had happened was that I think he had, it's almost, and, and this is a sign of what a great actor was. He was, he didn't want to have the experience, not to play the part, but he knew that he was actually have to be this man and commit these sort of crimes of the heart. And he didn't really want to do it. And yet, when I talked to him the next time, all he had to say was, well, what if he says this here instead of that? And what if he says this? And what if he kisses her on the head at the end of And I said, oh, yeah, those are all really good ideas. And at the end of it, I realized I was talking to someone almost like a collaborator. And I said, so are you doing it? And he said, yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Maybe he decided while in that process while he was talking to you. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Yes, I think that is what happened. I think he sort of started realizing that he was playing her, whether he liked it or not. I don't know.